<laughs> That's so cool. I just checked Spotify, 13,000 plays in just the first three days. That's so amazing. That's the best start ever to any one of my, of any kind of my songs. It's just amazing. And thanks a lot for all of you for listening to the song. I link it down below if you're curious to know what it sounds like. Just go check it out, like it, save it to your playlist, share it with everyone. This is really highly appreciated. And it's just a joy, like sitting here alone in the studio and like working and twisting and improving here and there. And then finally putting my, my baby, my song out there and seeing that people actually like it. Also, if you're interested, there's still the download available. So if you want to know how I constructed the song, what every single element sounds like, there is like a sample pack made just out of the songs that I used in that song. Everything is in there. You can steal it, use it, rework it. So just check out the link in the description, get the download, listen to it, learn from it, and just have fun with these kind of stamps. Maybe they inspire you to make something your own. But now it's, it's time for music production. It's Sunday, no one is annoying me. So full on working mode. <laughs> So would you follow me, follow me To go and fight the world, don't you see? I got completely lost again, <laughs> working, mixing, due to you. That's like the follow-up to About You, actually. So whenever a song's released, I try to make the one that will follow it up. And I'm stuck, heavily stuck. But I think that's it for today in the studio. I promised Vanessa to not spend too much time in here, so I think We'll just do a quick and easy Q&A. First up, now that you're changing your sound more towards club, does your label as well? Actually, yes, why not? So if you're interested, also link down below in the description, the link to submit demos. We listen to every single one and respond to every single one. And yeah, it will be now more open. So only instrumentals, also fine. As long as it's something I'm interested in DJing and that sounds good, it's mixed well, we'll release it, but probably still mainly vocal focused, or at least have like a little vocal in there. How to choose people that will give me constructive feedback on my music. Hmm, how to choose them? I mean, try to become friends with other producers, go to events with other producers, try to find someone online, and like things like the dancer, ADE, Ultra, Miami, like they're really good to get to know other people that are like-minded. And this way do business stuff, advance with your music production, like this connecting part, very important. Is it necessary to have a camera to start a YouTube channel or the phone is enough? The phone is enough actually, I would just record the audio externally if you can, but it's not about the gear, it's about like, the content that you make and then eventually get the gear because like the last 10% are not possible without the gear. Can I become an EDM producer without a degree? Yes, 100%. Giveaway results uh, for everyone because a lot of people are confused and ask me like who won. I always post it on my Instagram in the story and the people that win are linked and they are contacted on top of that personally to know that they won. Same guy, another question about the giveaway. What happened to the monitors? They're still standing right there because that's a giveaway we're doing for two weeks. So on my Instagram, you still have one more week to have a chance to win these speakers. How can I make money as a music producer beginner? That's really, 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 really hard. I don't even know. Like me personally, I released on small labels first and made maybe a hundred per track and I made a track a month. So I had a thousand to hundred. That's not enough to, to, to live nowhere on this planet. So yeah, I think the answer and probably a lot of people won't like it, is you have to have another source of income that is not music related and do the switch slowly over time. I started luckily so early on that I was still in school and university where you don't have to make money. And then once I, I quit university, I just switched to making the income. Like I was already in university making a, like, at least like three quarters enough money to pay for rent, food and everything. And then I quit university to do it full time, but I already had an income. I already was connected. I already had something going. So like the start, you need 
another source of income. Don't be stupid and just do a hard switch from having a normal job to, hey, I'm just going to sit in the studio and make music, and if I have more time, I will more, make more money. That's not true. Like, building up a music career to make a living off will take at least a year, at least. And I'm talking about someone that already knows how to produce. So if you have your first release and that one has 100,000 plays on Spotify, then you can maybe, 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 maybe think about it. Best tip for producers trying to get more publicity, writing blogs and getting your songs out on big labels because they will then take care of that for you. But number one is the music has to be good enough and for most people it actually isn't. How do I overcome my laziness? Sometimes I tend to be lazy, I don't know why. I'm also very lazy, like if you ask Vanessa she would say I'm super lazy when it comes to anything at home. I think it's about, like everyone is lazy, it's, it's like the nat nature of like being human, we want to be efficient and I always call my laziness efficiency, it just sounds a little better. So I, I like leave out all of the stuff that is not necessary and focus on the necessary stuff. I always have a list with my tasks and I prioritize them. And if something is not important, I just don't do it. If you're lazy in the sense of you start doing other stuff with your time that doesn't help you with your music career or whatever you pursue in life, for example, gaming, watching TV, Netflix, yeah, that's a problem. Just stop it. Just, just stop it and you will be way more productive. Maybe try to find a place where you're not distracted. For example, here in the studio, Wi-Fi is really bad, so there is not that much distraction. I turn the phone off or leave it in the office so that people can't call me, because if I don't know about things, they also do not distract me. Best crowd you have had. It's been a while that I DJed, but the best crowd, ooh, that's a long time ago. There was like a club in Mönchengladbach, which is like maybe an hour by car away. And it's very small. It's like maybe twice the size of this room. So 150 people max. The entire ceiling LEDs projected on glass, which looks really cool and dope and they can change colors and pop on and off. The rest of the room entirely dark and they had something back in the days by law where the club had to close at five in the morning. So I DJed there from midnight till five in the morning and five in the morning, it's still entirely full. The, the crowd is going wild and then you play your last song and everyone like full room still claps and, and thanks you for, for, for the good set. So that's like a moment that I highly appreciated. But I've been there like two or three years ago. This law is, is gone. So they're open way longer and you don't have that moment anymore. Like having this full crowd clapping, lights on. Everyone goes home. It's for DJ more satisfying for the guests. Probably not. How do you arrange and how to turn loops into melodies? I would actually start pretty early on once you have worked your first hour and you have like kick, clap, like some hi-hats, a bass line and the first main synthesizer or a vocal or both. I would then start arranging and at least having like an, uh, a break part that leads up to the drop part and make those two all right because that's like the core like the transition from that one part to the other you should spend the most time on that point in the production 100 percent and if that works the rest of the arrangement is easy piece it's just copy paste intro outro is usually just like drums and and maybe chords or something do you still ghost produce you're producing new songs almost every day you can sell some of them I personally have the feeling I'm not producing enough and that I'm not productive enough and that I'm not making enough music. So ghost productions, I don't have the time for that. And I also don't enjoy it. I did it in the past out of necessities. You know what I mean. It was necessary to do it because otherwise I wouldn't have made any money. So now that it's not necessary, why should I do it? Because... I don't need no more money. I can pay my rent, I can pay my food, I can pay for travel, that's fine. I don't need a fancy car. I don't need like jewelry, a big watch, like maybe one day if I have so much money that I don't know what to do with it, but um, I'm not I'm not forcing and trying to, to make more. I prefer doing what I like because that keeps you sane on the inside and that's more important than having 
fancy things. Best free plugin, that's easy, Span. Span the analyzer is for free. If you still don't have it, get it. It will help you to produce a lot, especially if you don't have an acoustically treated room. Ableton or Pro Tools, I don't know. I have used both a little, but not to full extent. Never finished an entire song with either of them. So um, I'd say Pro Tools, if you are more classically recording in a studio, recording bands, recording singer-songwriters, but for everything modern, Ableton, definitely. What do you think about Corona? Uh, way too many people making way too much panic about it, and the weird part is the panic causes more harm than the virus itself. Like the stock market, down. And this will cost a lot of jobs, this will cost a lot of lives at the end more than than the virus itself probably what would be the best way to start charging your clients if you're a mixing engineer huh i mean you should you should charge from the start you're offering a service you don't get a percentage you should get at least like an hourly amount x i'd say at least $40 per hour of mixing at least like a good engineer will take 3000 for a song. I used to take 300 to 500 per song mixed and it usually took me a day. So um, yeah, mixing is something you should never do for free. But you should have already songs that you mixed and can showcase on your website or to the people like in before and after. And if that's really good, people will pay for it, of course. Do we have to separate the sub bass from the top bass all the time? No, no. That's just giving you more control. So the sub bass in my case is usually just a sine wave and I can turn it up and control this way the very, very low frequency separately. And if you have a synth, a bass synth that already covers the top and the low and it sounds good and you don't need to boost uh, maybe 80 hertz like above the kick depending on, on the key you're using, then, then it's fine. But if you need a little more, like in the low sub 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 frequency, it's nice to separate it. It's like a preferred style, but you don't have to do it. Like mixing and music production is about, like it's the science of frequencies actually. You have, okay, let's do that really quick. Cause that's like my, my number one mixing tip of all time. Um, like the concept, if you understand that, it will help you a lot. So let's take let's take Martin Forwork's book. Imagine this being like a box, and that's the space you have. That's your entire mix. And if you fill it, for example, with a fat kick, it already takes up a lot of space. If you take a tiny, tiny, small kick, it fills up a lot less space, and you have more space for other stuff. So it's like a box, and you try to cramp in it as much stuff as possible. You have to be careful that the things don't mix. That's what EQing is for, to, to give them their distinguished room. And for example, the bass, if it's really taking up a lot of space and then the kick is taking even more, there is not much left for the other part. And it really depends on the style of music. If you make like singer, songwriter kind of music, the kick is usually not in there. It's just the guitar and the voice. You have a lot of room for both. If you make electronic music, it's all about the kick taking so much space. And you can compress it to like densen it. You can compress the vocal to make it more dense. You can compress the lead synthesizer to make it more like compressed and dense and put more into that box. But also on the other hand, compression or too much compression gives you problems. So there is just that much room in a mix and you have to fill it wisely and you have to make sure that the things you fill it with sound extremely good and that they don't interfere with each other. So a classic club track usually has a kick, a snare or clap, and two and four offbeat hi-hat, maybe eight or 16 hi-hats, a huge lead synthesizer, and a bass underneath. That's like for an instrumental club track without vocals. You just need those elements, but these elements need to be right and as big and as fat as possible. Everything else is just like a distraction or should be stuff that just pops in and out like very briefly to not interfere with the mix. So maybe some effects here and there to make it interesting over time. But especially Big Room is doing this to the extreme 
where it's sometimes just kick and a main synthesizer that covers all of the frequencies and that's why it can sound that fat because it's so little taking up the entire space of this box. If you look into a Michael Jackson production there are a lot more small things in there which is a lot harder to get really fat. They still did it somehow, I don't know how, like the Michael Jackson stuff still holds up and sounds amazing but yeah that's like the key principle of mixing. You have a limited amount of space, you need to use it to the max, cramp as much stuff in there as necessary, the stuff needs to be as good as possible because you only have that amount of space, don't put any shit in there, it just doesn't work. Give every element its distinguished space in, in, like in room, like the width, mono, like in reverb, the depth, and um, yeah, if necessary, compress it to squeeze out a little more, but be careful with the compression, if you over compress, the good sound will sound shitty again, but yeah, I hope this makes sense. Anyways, I think that's enough tips, tricks, questions answered. If you want to hit me up with any kind of question, check out my Instagram and don't forget to check out my new song, link down below. The sample pack to the new song also link down below and a little giveaway today. I'll give away three masterings of your songs for everyone that comments down below how many times in my new song you can actually hear about you. Count it, write it down below, I'll pick three and master their song and, and send them some feedback to like take care of the next 10%. <laughs>